I'm Kunal Rana and uh, I'm working as a Python developer since four years, four or more than four years, right? So hello everyone. Can we start right now or maybe later? Everyone is aware about today's session, might be, right? That's oh, right, two and is visible. Yes, you can put the answer or any questions over here, as well here in a QA panel, right? Uh, thank you, everyone. So, uh, everyone is aware about the ID. Uh, anyone have heard about the ID? What is ID or uh, why we use ID? Okay. So, uh, this session about the id right why we use id and where um, how can it will be uh, helpful in our daily base scenarios right um so uh, you might we know that uh, we are working on multiple files right when we are developing something or we are um, like doing some great work right ide so uh, ID is a one kind of uh, file opening management system, right? Where we can handle multiple files and we can uh, do code over there. Like you are aware of the Jupyter Notebook, right? But Jupyter Notebook is a single platform that we can only use the single files over there, right? We have to do uh, only one. We have only one file and we have to do each end code over there, right? So there where the ID stands in, right? Uh, whether we can have multiple files right in a python module uh, where we have to manage multiple files or uh, yeah uh, where we have to manage multiple files or we can uh, do multi uh, handle the multiple files where there the id stands for right okay so uh, this is called id right this is the pycharm id right where we have a we can handle multiple files this is the html file this is a file five file this is the csv file right uh this is the you can use the pycharm file right uh sorry anaconda or uh, you can say jupyter notebook file right this is the docker file we can handle here this is the uh, text file right so uh, this all kind of file and uh, this all kind of scenario we can maintain in ID, right? We can have a one kind of a text editor we can call it, right? But in advanced manner, right? So there where the ID stands for, right? It is uh, interactive. We can uh, install multiple kind of uh, uh, file extensions, right? Where we can see the different file identified by the ID. See, this is the Python file. So that it stand uh, Python symbol. This is the CSV file. So that is stand uh, some uh, other data. Uh, this is the different kind of file we will explore in later, right? And this is the ignore file, uh, right? Uh, this is the hidden file, or this is Docker. This is a uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook file. So every uh, file have that different one identification, so we can identify when better when. Okay. Uh, uh really i have a one question uh have you yes you can uh use a jupyter notebook and uh uh it is uh it's your choice you can use pycharm over here or you can use visual studio this is our both same kind of scenarios right uh ramya Yeah, uh, Niranjan uh, ID stand for file handling, right? Where we can uh, do a code and write, and we can get a suggestion uh, on a based on a uh, like a file uh, file extension we can call, right? Extension file extension means kind of this file file, right? Uh, HTML file. Uh, we, I will show you the HTML file. So we can get a suggestion over when we write the code. So some kind of it will help to us to manage the code in better way. And uh, now 
it will help in a better conditions right like if you have to write something if you have to import something from other the module uh, are you aware of the python modules everyone are aware of the python yes so the python module is um, we can handle over here this is the we call uh, source is a python module right application is a python file if you have to create a one python module then we just have to click over here python package and whatever we call is utils module then it will show us uh, this kind of utils module right where we can import file data and everything when can we can get over here right so there is the id stands for okay mm, right so uh, first of all how we can open the folder or a uh, project in id right it's just a basically simple thing let me close this oral for you and we'll file in later right uh, where just we have to go to the files right um, let me share my screen again is it visible still uh, here we have a, uh, a folder right this is the python folder right or the project folder we can call right this just we have to just open with the uh, open with folder and then this is the python community edition there is a uh, multiple editions with the id some of them are paid some of them are uh, free to use right as of now we are uh, choosing for free to use options right okay um let me share my the project is opening in background right so yeah. so uh, that's how we can open a python file okay now this is the interesting part right this is uh, is a requirement file right um uh, we if we have to install something in a python right we uh, we have a, a something called a pip right if you heard about the pip right we if we have to install something then we have to use pip right yes okay great so uh, pip will uh, help us to install a python modules that already is developed okay so uh, where we use pip and how we can use pip so before using pip uh there is a some scenario called virtual environment anyone heard about the virtual environment so uh, suppose this is the your system this is your operating system or this is your computer and there he has a python is installed or other uh, kind of library is installed over here right python we have uh, with a different version called with 3.9 version right or other module with the pip we have in this library right uh, so uh, there is a different things we have installed in our software environment right and there is a multiple project we have to use in a one computer right so every project have a different requirement and every project have their different scenarios to installing right and every project are working on a different staging or files or everything is totally on a different different uh, modules right so where the virtual environment comes in in it is ki uh, if we have multiple environment and we have to separate them each other so we have to install a pip requirement in a virtual environment virtual environment it's not a real environment it's just system understand it is a virtually created for the uh, particular thing right uh, just kind of uh, see this is the main system right and uh, we can draw something better uh, here this is the virtual environment right this is a virtual environment we have installed. so we can get this python to the virtual environment as a sample and we can install another pip over here with the different version right we will show it later but uh, this is a thing that virtual environment comes in right so it is separate the our environment right pip environment from main system to our usage right so we have a different usage multiple usage so we can create a multiple 
virtual environment to the one system so it will handle in better way okay uh, today's session we are working on the how we can use the id in our real life environment how can we uh, install virtual environment by using requirement files right okay how we can uh, use the docker in a uh, what we call flask application and how we can import a different different modules in particular uh, flask app or how can we use the environment file that is not going to affect to the other variables that we are using understand vivu okay why it's required so why it's required because i told you know uh, there is a, a multiple projects in going to be in one system right and every project have their own requirements right uh, some called uh, if you don't know about the versioning right but there is a uh, versioning uh, in our uh, python where we have to maintain different different version right there is a one project is working on python 3.7 one project is working on python 3.8 one project is working on python uh, 3.6 so every version has their own dependencies right so we have to solve this dependency over with the virtual environments so there where we have to create a virtual environments and uh, with the virtual environments we can install the particular libraries with the pip and uh, uh, with the help of requirement.txt file there we can um, like list of multiple uh, requirement and we can uh, create uh, install it in a one place is take a system space or python it take a system space right it will take a uh, take a system space or uh, in the particular system space it is create a uh, create a one environment there we can use particular version of python Uh, so uh, everyone understand the virtual environment and why we can use it and where we have to use it yeah okay, good uh see uh, this is the python file requirement.txt right uh, requirement.txt help us to manage the multiple pip installation in a one single line right so this is the flask version then how that we can define in flask right it's not about the flask we have to define in each and every way um let me i can share you my whole screen because i have to share it again and again okay so the here is the pip version okay uh pip and in a, in a pip we have multiples module over here right uh, somewhere uh, have uh, you have used uh, pandas i guess right so the pandas have a uh, multiple uh, uh installation right so when we click on pandas there is a version declared over here 2.0.1 pandas is the latest version see there is a older version available so if we have a different python version there is uh, that is not supported by this pandas version then we have to <coughs> uh manage those uh, with a different file system right so there where it came from right so we have to manage multiple system like pandas 2.1 and if we are not declaring something then it will take a latest from the uh, virtual environment or a uh, pip uh, right uh, from the pip libraries right pip is a one kind of a uh, version control that handle the python libraries if you are not aware of the pip then pip is a one kind of version control that handle the python libraries and we can use it in a different manner okay so uh, let me first uh, how to use a um a uh, virtual environment and how we can create it and how we can activate those virtual environment right so uh, there is a different different things we can use in uh, virtual environment right so there is a different different thing virtual environment virtual env right so virtual env is a short form of virtual environment right uh, there is also python vnv we can use over here right so uh, have a different things see 
so there is a one command we can see over here there is a one installation command or documentation we can find over here right and how we can use it right so there is a one command if you have to create virtual env see this is the call virtual env this is the command we can use right and then we can hyphen p help us to select the python so i am selecting python 3 over here right and with the python 3 uh we have to give a name right which name we have to give so i will giving the vnv virtual environment of the name of the particular environment right so once i click it so this is the created virtual environment right with the c python 3.10 this is the latest python in my system right and where it's located so it's located at home my folder name repo python flask and vnv after when i click in just see this is the virtual environment that is been created over here so there is a python file wheels file different different files over here multiple that is help us to uh, working on a environment right so how we can activate it so there is a, a different different uh, kind of uh, command we can use in in activation right this is the linux system uh, we are seeing is a linux system right and uh, windows have a different kind of working around over there and uh, mac if you are using mac then this is the same scenario where you can use it right there is a source command we can use right we have to go to a virtual environment then bin and then activate so this command see source virtual bin activate this command help us to activate virtual command virtual environment in this uh, area so when when i click see this is the virtual environment is activated and when i click on python see this is the python or uh, let me show you something different thing uh, see let me deactivate this okay this is the deactivated and when i pip list command pip list command help uh, get us a how many modules we have in right now so th uh, this see when i uh, deactivate virtual environment and when i call a pip list there is a so many uh, dependency of the python that uh, we can found over here see there is a virtual environment will file it is so many things pilos right and when we activate again okay and when i call pip list again see there is a nothing there is a just a basic python nothing than this that's where we can use the multi uh, different environment for using virtual and all right and one how we can install suppose i have to install this flask right so how we can install in a uh, normal way pip install and then flask okay this is the command okay and when it, when i enter it it is installed in this particular virtual environment but how we can install multiple uh, libraries over here see i am just commenting this files because these are two large files over here so let me install numpy and flask first we will show you the pip list right so pip list uh, there is a no numpy package right now right this is a flask click blinker jinja mark save there is a associated with the flask module that is already automatically installed when when we are installing flask right uh, but uh, let me uh, try with the again and now i am going to install with the requirement file so pip install hyphen r hyphen r stand for the requirement file okay and there is a requirement dot ts once i click it see this is the collecting numpy and it is said that flask 2.3.2 is already satisfied why because we already installed over here is the same command where we have installed right and numpy is not installed in this library so that's why the numpy is going to be installed over here okay Once it's installed we will show you the pip list again okay so pip uh, let me tell you pip list it help us to uh, get a uh, every version that is installed in the particular virtual environment or a uh, python right it is a listing of the pip simple thing 
see this is the install right when i click again we place uh let me show you in a um, list okay see this is now the numpy stand right see before we can't see the numpy over here with the upper of mark space but now we have a numpy uh so everyone can aware of the numpy right now just a second my chat or a uh, virtual environment uh, everyone is aware the command that i show you uh can you please repeat the virtual environment again in a vsd vsd means okay uh, visual code okay visual code and a pycharm is a id is a one kind of a, uh, text editor there we can open a uh, different kind of uh, programming language files right and it will help us to enhance our code and identify where we can where we are wrong and how we can improve ourselves to the uh, in that particular manner it suggest the automation auto text it suggest a, to auto text i will show you in id it will suggest some of the text or uh, how we can use it right mm. see uh, okay so uh, if i am open the python file right if i write something import see it will show the import is a command right if i write something see it is show the import is a command right import a flask ut import utils and it is identify utils is the folder or a package that we have created over here right so it will suggest those things right if i create a one file see there is a no file associated not right but if i create a one file on uh, more over here right let me call uh, helper helper file right okay uh, and when i uh, try to create a one again so it will create a help us to helper file is there where source dot utils so there is a source and there is a utils and when i click it it will create so us that this is the correct file right if you have to import some particular function right so there is a utils now we can tap hello world okay this is the function and return hello world all right where we all start our programming from the hello world right so when we use import and then get hello then this is the say this is the function hello world from where then source dot utils dot help that's how it help us to in a coding way with the id or a visual school okay so everyone can understand those things what i'm trying to say um, where id stands for and how we can use it it's take a time if you are new uh, new in this particular thing it will take a time to you understand what i am trying to say right but this is the technical manner that i am showing you over here see so and um, there we can use uh, multiple files right with the utils is the we can understand utils is a python module and the id is help us to get a particular file or folder we can identify in better right uh, but you know uh, id is uh, one kind of thing that uh, it is also identify that we have to give it the particular python or which python we are using to uh, developing uh, one code right so uh, there is a one call interpreter model there we have to uh, set it to the our environment so once we set it 
the actual code will identify this is the particular thing that we are using right so this is the uh, see it is all uh, identify that we are using uh, flask python docker virtual environment bin and the particular python so when we click over here see this is the all uh, installation that we have done it will show us here and then we can click so it will automatically identify all the files all the model that we have installed over here and then it's work see we haven't installed dot env file so it will give us a red line because we are not installed it yet once we are installing this dot env file it will uh, hide the line see this is the python dot env module that we are using then if install 25 and see uh, once it's index updated uh, the lines is gone red lines is gone So uh, I'm telling you that uh, how uh, the installation identifier. Let me uninstall again. Yeah. So see, ID will identify with what uh, installation is done in our environment and which are not done in our not environment, right? So uh, see, this is dot env module that we haven't installed yet, right? We have uninstalled. So it will give us a red error. Say that, uh, see, once we click in and once is open, install dot env package or python dot env package, right? This is the suggestion by ID. So when we are using ID, it will suggest us that what is not installed and how to install it. But <laughs> we have to aware about which uh, module is not in well, once we install again right let me install again so uh, once i install uh, the red lines or the warning is gone yeah need to share a whole screen it is the whole screen uh, pop up is not visible because the uh, screen uh, have a, a small alphabet might be but uh, if you are uh, over uh, just over the mouse over the whatever the data it will show the what is the regard right uh, it's in your screen when you over uh, anything mouse cursor over the some line then it will suggest us what to do and what not to do uh, so everyone is aware about the virtual environment and uh, how we can use the multiple packages in one file and how id suggests us or have any questions or uh, if you have any doubts please let me know i will explain it again which uh, where you can stuck how can we automatically create a requirement uh, okay how can you create an automatically requirement directly okay so uh, there is a one uh, we call pip uh, a list version right and there we have to um, pass it to the particular file and then we can use requirement uh, dot txt so it will create for us see that's how it creates mm, this is the command pip list and then requirement dot txt And then all the files are being installed over here. Okay, yes. So that means delete this file. Okay. And um, this is okay. So uh, this is the one Flask project where I have installed NumPy or uh, Pandas, and we'll try to get a record from it, right and show it to you. First of all, uh, one thing that I would like to show you is a uh, Docker file. Okay. Second thing we can are going to cover is a Docker file. Uh, okay. So what is Docker file? 
and uh, what is the docker first of all we have to know about we have to aware about right yeah in the requirement uh, we you can uh, specify the version you need right uh, like uh, there is a uh, one version that i already mentioned this is a flask 2.3.2 if you have to install numpy with the specific version we can uh, uh, acquire double equal to and then we can uh, number of the particular version uh, but see the package is requirement see that uh, number uh, version is not satisfied with us so that's where id stands for right it's actually identify our code and help us in a better manner to how do we code how do we work and that's all okay okay don't know docker okay uh, so uh, docker is a one kind of technology right uh, it is actually use our system to work in a def, uh, our system um, what we call uh, uh, just a second uh, i need to get one word uh, actually okay a system uh, requirements right uh, docker is a uh, use our system requirements to work in a uh, separate task um, will let me share you whiteboard again okay hmm let me create it again once Mm, okay so let me share this is the our system okay uh, system means our uh, uh, computer right computer um, where we have multiple projects running in you know, right multiple project kind of thing is uh, we have a one project is working on a flask one project is working on a uh, django one is working on java other is working on a, a different model right uh, but in a computer system we have a pod allocation while we are running something in it right uh, there is a different different pod associated with the different different uh, <coughs> associated with the different different services right so that services depends on particular pod and that is running on it right uh, like if we have a Uh, some file or a browser so that is running on four four three module right so this is the particular allocated uh, slot that we have to use right so we cannot use one system as a multiple project that is running on because every project have their own requirement right uh, there is a one project that is working on flask one project is working on django right one uh, project is working on machine learning right so uh, all cannot work together in one system right so uh, what we have to do we have to acquire multiple system to run in separate project so that will cost us we have to create a, we have to buy multiple system to work on a different different project right because every project have their own requirements and all right uh, they have own for uh allocation uh right okay uh so uh, that's where docker comes in so what will docker do is uh so docker uh docker will create a uh, take a small parts of uh system requirement and working and used to work in that mode um uh, let me this is not good let me erase this okay let me create again okay so uh, assume that we our system have a um, what we call 
4GB or 8GB of RAM. 8GB of RAM, right? And we have a, a multiple projects that running on a one system. Okay. So where Docker comes in, Docker uh, take a particular uh, advantage from this uh, 8GB of RAM and hand uh, like working um, dynamically. So when it's required uh, RAM, then it will take from our system. And when it not uh, required uh, the particular RAM, then it will give it back to the particular system. That's how Docker comes in, right? That Docker help in managing in different, different environments, right? So how that will work? See, we have a one HTTP port or a, you are not about the HTTP. Um, have you heard about the HTTP? Anyone is aware about the HTTP or any port location or layer of socketing anything? SSL standards. Okay, you are aware about the SSL. Okay, SSL is used to connect uh, two computers with the secure socket layer. Right? This is the stand for secure socket layer where we can communicate with the two multiple systems. Okay. Uh, if you are aware about any desk in a current scenario, right? Any desk. Have you heard about any desk? Anyone is heard about any desk? Or how many are aware about any desk? Uh, yeah. So that's any desk, right? So what it will do? It will uh, help us to manage a operate one system from another system right with the username and password right so any desk uh, is a one kind of remote work so when we use any desk there is a one particular port that is running on it right a uh, port allocation is a different thing you might be not aware of the ports but is a kind of thing that uh, door of the system door of the system where we can open the particular door and we can get the data and once we get the data we have to close the door like uh, if we someone is standing in our door, uh, front of home we have to enter the, the people into a home we have to open the door then once uh, people is entered then we have to close the door that's uh, it's a one kind of uh, uh, port or door we have to use right so uh, there is a, uh, one system can allocate only one port at the time. So with the Docker, suppose we have a, a remote desktop or any desk, okay? Any desk. So any desk running on a, uh, we have to run a two any desk in a two uh, one system. Then how we can do it? So Docker help to create an environment that we can install particular any desk in a one doctor and then we can uh, install another any desk in a another system this is the docker let me write over here okay docker one and uh, there is a offer two okay so so any desk can run on Docker one and Docker two. But if you are not using any uh, Docker, we cannot install two any desk in a one system, right? Uh, yeah, in like a virtual space apps in an Android. Come, uh, perfect. Uh, like we have a WhatsApp. And we have to create a multiple WhatsApp in one system. That is, they are providing us to create it, right? Android phone is doing that, right? Mm. Anyone have used multiple WhatsApp in one mobile phone? Multiple Instagram in one phone? most of it right so so there where the docker stands okay uh, 
so will docker get the particular ram or data from the main system and help us to manage multiple environment in a uh, particular main system right this is the one docker environment this is the second docker environment uh, and it is a totally dynamically working right if we have 8 gb of ram uh, if docker is nothing running uh, in it then it will take a no gb depth like it will take a no any bytes of ram to it working on it but right but uh, if we are were running something in docker one and it is require 2 gb ram then it will acquire 2 gb ram from main system uh, other 6 gb ram as stay is it uh, stay it is and then we are uh, doing to and then if second uh, after that if second docker is working and it will take a 1 gb of ram from main system then uh, this is a require 2 gb this require 1 gb uh then the other 5 gb will remaining in main system and we can use it is in regular so there were the docker stand okay so uh, let's uh, show the docker file right so uh, let me show you python 3 uh you can see this is the 3.10.6 python we have installed over here. Uh, see the Python version over here. There is a three point ten is written, right? So this virtual environment is based on Python three point ten, right? Okay. So let me show you again Python hyphen hyphen version. Okay, so see the Python three point ten point six is running, right? but our project required Python three point eight, right? That I already told you. Um, let assume that uh, we have a one song that is sang by different different uh, what we singers. Okay. so uh, that kind of thing is a versioning versioning is a whenever something new is come they update the version right like uh, if you have a, is update something in whatsapp right whatsapp is having a uh, anything new in to development right so um, with the particular thing um, like version is one kind of um, new song that or a uh, application that we have installed right uh, like whatsapp right uh, so when we open a whatsapp in our play store it will show us uh, some version in a uh, down over there right <clears throat> play store or a uh, where you have to install mm, whatsapp in like application store right so when we open the whatsapp messenger and in the detail there is a one version written down the which version of uh, uh, whatsapp we are using right now right so uh, uh, in a app info you will find it there is a current now as i can see is a 2.23. a uh, 75 version i have downloaded right right uh, so uh, that kind of version we have in python so latest is a 3.12 in my system i am using 3.20 and uh, like we have to work on 3.8 so how we can do it so this is the docker file okay docker file help us to install uh, one environment where we can install python 3.8 and we can create our requirement and uh, we can use it our requirement over there uh, whatever we have to install uh, this is the same terminal we can use it in a uh, like a, what kind of in a box where we can uh, in the box something we will separate it from all our system it will separate from other uh, to module to our handling part right uh okay uh, there is a one uh, big guide you can uh, see in a docker installation uh, 
i will share you there is a docker okay in future you will get a docker docker installation right in every system there is a different kind of installation we can get so this is the all kind of operating system right if you have a CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and every installation have their uh, different uh, command to install it, right? If you are using Window, then there is a different thing, right? See, Docker installation are totally different. This is the command that you have to install it, right? Uh, if you are uh, using a uh, Mac OS, then this is the different uh, command that you have to use in while installations, right? So uh, that is the installation of the Docker. I have already installed. I'm just showing you how it will work, right? So, uh, so we are going to install uh, Python 3.8 with the help of Docker. So how we can use it? So there is I have a write some command over here. There is a Docker build and the tag. This is the T tag for tag what i have to give in the tag and the dot dot is stand for all the files this is all the file and this is the docker where we have to create the python 3.8 then we have to install peep over there then we are installing requirements.txt right that we already use it to install those file right there is a command we have used over here requirement.txt see this is the same command we can run this now and this is the expose command right where uh, i talk about the port right the expose help us to get a work on this port on this outer side environment right outer side mean docker is one kind of a box and we have to use 8080 to outside of the docker in our system so there we have to expose this okay and this is the entry point what we have to write python and then command okay okay so we will take a hands on on it see this is the docker build this is the tag right we are giving tag and this is the command we can use it okay so once i use it this command okay so see it will install and uh, one we come once we complete the docker uh, what is 80? 8080 is a port that we are using right 8080 is a port like I told you that uh, we have uh, one house that we have uh, one door with the num uh, that we can give a number to the particular door. We as of now we given 8080 to the door number. So we are uh, opening the door to communicate with the other environment. So that's where the 8080 what I have wrote. Okay, see, uh, here is the um, flask installing again itself, right? NumPy installation again itself. And this is the time taken of every line we have wrote in a Docker file. See, as of now, uh, where we stand is a eight number of line. 
so here we are in this is the eight uh, this is called two line consideration and this is the eight Mm, so this is installing everything. See, our Docker is created, right? And what next step we have to do? We have to run particular Docker with the 80804. This name of the container and this is the file that we are going to use. Okay, then once I run it, right? Uh, container is used by you have to remove that container and you have to use the rename. Okay, so one. So this is the 8080 port is already filled. See, see, the port is already allocated, so that's why it's not going to be installed again. So, Docker. This is already running. Okay. So when we open and run again, post zero eight. Uh, let me share you the screen again. See when I uh, if it's visible, my screen. Is visible to you, everyone. Yes. Uh, see, this is the eight zero eight zero, and uh, this is the local host port. Local host, it means our system, right? This is the Docker container ID, and this is the IP. So Docker going to use their own network to run it so this is the docker ip we are using okay so that's how it's going to differentiate our cell right if we are run my ip over here then it will show oh, what is my ip then it will show different ip right Uh, see, this is my IP, okay, uh, but uh, in Docker, there is a IP is different thing. See, so that's where is a differentiate each IP. So Docker uh, run its own network and it will create a different environment. This is the environment ID. Um, ID means identification that we are using for unique name. So, shall we take a five minutes break? Okay, uh, just a water break. Mm. Okay, how we retrieve IP in a virtual environment? So, uh, Python have a one module called socket, right? This is socket. Um, so this is the socket, and with the socket we can get those things, right? Uh, Sometimes, like let me show you. Uh, okay, this is the one Python. Uh, handling we can use to better interact with the python right the call name is ipython right so how we can get it uh, so this is the socket okay so import socket and uh, this is the socket host name so when we call host name over here then this is the name of the host name and uh, when we call host name by ip then it will return my host ip See, this is my host ID. And uh, if we are using in Docker, then Docker have their own IP that I already show you in a HTML page, right? 
So that's how it's differentiate those two things. Okay. Uh, anyone have any doubt till yet? Um, what I have explained over here from the starting of the question. No. Uh, is there anyone else have a um, 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 Ashwarya, what uh, should I run quickly? the docker part right yes okay uh, so uh, that's uh, this is the installation instruction i have given uh, this is the creator one python image image uh, it will say uh, sorry this remote okay. image is for uh, like uh, we are installing something in one operating system right like uh, if we have to install android if we have to install mac os if we have to install windows right then there is a different different images we can get it from internet so in here with the talker we are creating one image to help us to install particular 3.8 version of the python with the using this docker file okay so when we run this command okay um, sorry okay so when we run this command it will create a one uh, image from this right and with that image we are working on uh, creating a uh, uh, one project and we uh, with the project we can run it okay is there anyone have a um, any doubt other doubts? Okay. Uh, yes, my screen is freeze because I'm waiting for someone's answers. Uh, and uh, okay, and so you, if your uh, Docker is. Yes, you have to work from the scratch in the project. Uh, and. Uh, Docker, it's not running because you have to open the particular port in Docker. And if you are running on Flask, then you have to run Flask command to run it over there. See, see the Docker uh, image is created over here, uh, but the container is already running with the same port. So if I have to create another port, just I have to change the name. Uh, like like I can install eight uh, zero eight one and then run it. Mm -hmm. This is the container is running with the eight zero eight one. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, see here I got the error docker env value docker logs help us to get a log why it's not running so it will say that uh, module name not found because we have commented this line before so uh, now I have uh, undo that line and we try to install them again, right so it is installing everything again
um, instruction file in a chat. Sure, I will put this instruction file in a chat. Okay, so uh, this is the new container is uh, we have, uh, but uh, we have to kill all the Docker first because there is a, so many container is running over here, right? So Docker ps. Okay, there is a no nothing is running right now. Then we'll run this again. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is so many things is running over here. I have to stop them. Right, this, this is the command. So it will stop all the container where we can See every container is uh, stopped, and uh, I have to just uh, stop after the remove. So every container will remove. Then we'll check there is nothing is running, and if we run this command again, it will. Run. So there is a no project is running, and uh, we can verify this is running in a local host with the command eight zero. See, this is the running name. and this is the domain name none because we haven't set the domain name yet. And this is the environment file. And, uh, this is all the data that we are using. You have to export the 500 port outside of the Docker. Um, like this, uh, I have done over in installation file. See, this is the port where I'm binding and this is the port where it's a uh, Docker using internal, right? Uh, like this is the 88 port that Docker run and then this is port that we can use outside of the Docker. And uh, let me put two command over here. Um, there is a uh, three command. Let me put it here. Uh, this is the one, right? Uh, this is the stop command, and uh, with the stop, uh, this is the remove command. see uh, this is a command uh, this is show us all the container is running this is stop all the container and this is uh, remove all the containers because if we are running same container with the same name then it will not allow us to run right so that's where we have to separate those things Anyone have uh, any other questions? No. Then let's wait for the five minutes. Other member can join. Me. Okay. Uh, so Docker execute. Uh, once everyone is come, I will show you why we use uh, Docker execute. Uh, this command
दादर वर्चुअल so can we start again okay so let's resume so uh, we have seen that uh, docker to uh, multiple docker command right there is a docker run docker stop docker run will help us to run the docker file this is the stop all the docker files this is a remove all docker file that's running in background huh? and, uh, show us a docker file that is running in background okay that is a different thing okay, okay. 
uh, this is the virtual environment that how we create this is the install animation that how we can install the spike okay and uh, this is the uh, virtual environment how we can create a virtual environment then this is the how we activate the virtual environment okay uh, this is the create uh, python image right from 3.3 image is a one kind of operating system that we are installing in a, our operating system okay uh, then uh, this is the run that particular operating system with the name of the operating system that is the a given name of the, our operating system the tag we call it tag okay and this is all of the command now we have to dig into this docker execute and uh, why we use and how to use okay so see uh, as we can discuss uh, there is a uh, two things in uh, our scenario there is a docker and the uh, docker will create a one environment right there is a separate totally separate uh, installation that we are using in docker right uh, like uh, we have a hidden folder in android system right that if we are open that particular hidden folder we can't see anything outside of the folder right yes <coughs> in android file we have some hidden folder right and uh, there we can see that this is the hidden folder and this is uh, how we can use it right uh, like uh, if we have something in hidden folder then we can't see outside of the particular hidden folder we can only see into the particular folder okay so uh, that uh, thing uh, work in the same as a docker in it right but in different manner as we can see uh, docker yes i can have an all okay so this is the running docker file okay uh, and this is run on a 8080 okay and this is the protocol is a transaction control protocol that is we are using right now okay and what command is running python tapi dot if we run this same command in here it will run but it will say that address already in it use so that's why we have to create a multiple docker file to run it in a different port okay and if we are running on different port and what if we have to uh, run this command separately or if we have to install something in docker right so how we can do this so uh, if you have to install something new requirement uh, something called uh, let's say now if we have to install pandas okay <coughs> okay so uh, pandas uh, if we have to install in pandas uh, and we do not have to run it a docker uh, the uh, the docker build up command again right this docker build up command. because if you have to install something then we have to run it uh, again and again if you have to if ha if we can change something if you are changing something then i have to run this command again if you are changing in this file then uh, i have to run this command again uh, this one and then uh, again this one so this will take a too much time right so uh, docker execute uh, will uh, create uh, this command this command will help us to interact into the docker right like ssh right ssh is help us to create um, uh, one system to the another system right like any desk any desk is uh, help us to work on another operating system right like another computer that we have far from away okay so <coughs> this is the command that help us to uh, work on that into the docker right so what is this this is the id of our container this we call this every time it will generate a unique okay so i have to replace this id and then i have to run this command again okay so once i run is see this is call say we are at the application folder okay and if i run this python command python 
and it will show that this is the python 3.8 and if we are running this outside of the docker then it will show the python 3 python 3.8 see the two python versions are different over here as you can see there is a two python version <coughs> in my system there is a python 3.10 and into the docker we have python 3.8 how we can verify is we have to go to that particular docker and how we can go to, uh, go to the docker then we have a command docker execute it which uh, docker we have to go this is the id of the particular docker and then slash bin slash bash right this will help us to interact with the docker and there we can see there is another python 3.8.60 version okay so now i have to install one another pro uh, program that we call it uh, um, what we call pandas okay so how we can install the pandas over well? so just we have to use pip install pandas and this is installing itself see the panda is installing into the docker not the outside of the docker but into the docker right now we are installing pandas into the docker not outside of the docker so that's how it's work right see uh, the panda is installed itself and if we check again there is a pip list command that we already show see now we can see uh, where is the panda uh, here is the panda 2.0.1 the latest version that i have showed again because we haven't uh, verified the version so that's why it is installing different version over here the latest version we call okay yeah so we don't need to re, uh, uh, to run and build a command again and again so with the executing of the file we can install itself into the docker see i have installed pandas otherwise what i have to do i have to build uh, this command again and the image again then the we have to run this flask demo again okay so that's we can how we can use execute command okay but anyone uh, haven't see this file dot env because when we uh, write the file right uh, there is a first name and then dot com and then extension com like see there is app dot py there is a drug dot csv dot py right but in this file there is a only dot env extension it's called so are you curious about to understand those things why we have this uh, root env file over here and uh, what is the use of this particular env file okay so uh, see uh, in a web development world or uh, we are developing something we have to keep something secret that is not going to visible outside okay so uh, we have a environment variables in our operating system every operating system have their own environment variable okay so what is the environment variable environment variable is a secret data right secret data that uh, we can store it in a operating system okay something that i have my own password right i don't want to visible anyone outside of the particular my operating system 
so where i can stand it i will put it in a environment variable and i will use it whenever i need to use the particular password so there the environment env file it's coming env file is the file that we can declare environment variable right and we can use it in our operating system okay so how we can uh, initializing those file in a python so there is a one called you uh, module name dot env so this is the dot env the same name as a file we can rename those file whatever we can use it but we have to mention those file over here right and there is a, a load dot env function okay um load dot env and then we have to specify the particular file name right um see dot env path so the first thing and what we call dot env okay let's verify in docker is there uh, existing dot env so where we have stand it source and into the path so we just have to go to the source file then cd dot src ls we can verify there is a uh, no dot env file but we can identify by hyphen hyphen all okay so there is a dot env file it stands for okay so we have to use it that dot env file into this value okay so there is a dot values and dot env configuration and we are going to use the particular dot env file in our project okay and uh, where it stand for if we have to copy whole path then how we can copy the whole path and just uh, we just have to call it uh like this okay um source source slash f slash source slash dot env uh help this is in will work okay, let me hidden others installation is a num file let's hidden this okay and uh Let's exit this again. Okay. Uh, load env file. We have to build a uh, instructions again. We have to build a Docker file again. So uh, why? Because dot env only execute when we are initializing something. Right. Other thing is will not work in a doc. Uh, after uh, dot env file will not going to initialize those things. so we have to install or run it again okay so this is the installation is going to be complete because uh, we have removed so many things let's stop at the uh, running containers okay then we'll remove again Hmm. Okay. Docker room. There is one command I guess forgot to enter over here. This is the room. Okay. And then we can build it again. Now I I have to go to the particular environment that we have running dot env. let's see it's running see dot env example dot org it's running and where we have created those things we have created this in dot env example dot org we can put password we can put multiple things over here right so dot env help us to organize a secret data in our applications okay 
that we are hiding from other because if we are not hiding those data other people will get those data and use it in a bad way so that's why we have to create a dot env file right and we can use it in a pro development purpose like if we are using flask then flask uh, have some secret data and we can use it over and that's where the domain comes from so how we can get those domain we have to just load the env we have to convert this env in a dictionary manner and then we can use it over here. okay okay so docker ps let go to the docker ps that uh, let me show you something uh, this file it's running in uh, our pandas and will get uh, this response right uh, for the top row that how we can use pandas in a uh, application or multiple files right this is the last thing i'm going to show you um, that how we can get the data from pandas okay uh, see there is a docker execute command and we have to install pandas okay so how just we have to change the id of the particular docker okay this run it install pandas okay, i forgot to add a space see pandas depending on numpy so it is going to install numpy again so from where the pandas so pandas required a numpy so that's why he is installing again Okay. Uh, so I have sent uh, the instruction file over here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, see the pandas is installed uh, let me run another uh, url that is called read data let's see is a source of the data or not so here is i install the read data uh, i'm not in the IP address of the computer mm -hmm. I guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's it. There is yes, I have to run this again uh, because the requirement. Need to be installed. Something I have to change.
okay anyone have any doubt till now uh sure we will share on this on a whatsapp as well okay and uh, if you want this uh, zip file then i will uh, send this zip file uh, to the you right this will zip file will going to give you Uh, so guys this will take a time to installation but uh, let me show you the instruction this is the same thing that i am doing uh, we are doing in a jupyter file we are reading a csv file we just had five data this uh, three data this will get a three data and two json it means we are converting this data to the key pair value as a dictionary value and uh, with this uh, we are rendering to the uh, our uh, flask application that's how we can uh, hand uh, work on the flask as uh, like a python file uh, directly without using the ipdb or uh, uh, what we call a uh, jupyter notebook okay. so any question here this shared on 2nd october batch code and zip files sure sure we'll send is on our group as well okay uh, this will will we'll share this on a group okay if you have any doubt till now you can ask me over here the file a docker is running right uh, i have to remove the containers right the current working containers i have to just remove them and then Okay, stop. I have stop. I just have to remove those things. Turn it off. Okay, and then let's see, it's working or not. Yeah, see, it is working. Let me show you something. Uh, once it's visible, see, this is the first three data that we are reading from the CSV file. using pandas right that we are using in a ipdb main okay so that's we can implement uh, machine learning using uh, flask or any other python framework using docker using multiple requirements and with the virtual environment then separate us from Uh, affecting to the another environment yeah. anyone have a any question right now please let me know i hope the session will help you to interact with the docker id and the python module how we can import why we have to use uh, id yes while changing the env file we need to build a image again
Mm, then what will cover tomorrow? That I'm not sure what will cover tomorrow. Team will let you know, right? There is a new mentor, I guess, going to be take over from here. So I hope so this uh, session will help us in your better future. And if you have any doubt, please let me know. I will help to Thank you so much. Then we'll conclude the call. If there is no any questions, uh, but before the concluding call, thank you so much for your patience and for understanding what I have trying to say to you. Um, let me incur once again uh, the brief of this uh, session. I will. I would like to tell you why we use ID. So ID is uh, suggest us to help us in better code. It will help uh, to understand which uh, is a Python module and how we can import this and where it stand. Where is the indentation will stand of the Python module? There is a ID will stand for right uh, requirement file. Uh, it will help us to install multiple uh, installations at a one line of code, right? Uh, then flask is always aware about okay docker docker will help us to create a one uh, box in our operating system that we can use uh, whatever we can uh, do into the docker or other system will not know what we are doing system will not know what we are doing into the particular docker that is the secret container what we call as a docker okay And uh, the third thing is how we can read the CSV uh, from the Flask application. Okay, uh, so using pandas that we are used to do in a Jupyter notebook. This is the line that I have wrote in this. There is a PD CSV read head, and this is the data. And the same data we are getting in. Uh, uh, this file right now here this is the other data see mm. okay and uh, the docker file with the multiple docker help how we can use multiple python version in using docker like we have shown you that uh, python 3.10 and python 3.8 we are using in same system that we cannot do in a same uh, operating system but using docker we can do and we can achieve those things and any hello any question uh, that you would like to trigger or we can conclude Thank you so much. Thanks for your patience. I would like to leave this session or end this. Thank you so much.